Assalamu alaikum. My name is Haya, and I just have one question for you tonight. Islam is a religion of peace and freedom of thought and freedom of speech. So why in the Quran does it say that if a Muslim who is born a Muslim should be punished by death if he chooses not to follow the religion anymore? Sister, you said the Quran says that a person who is born as a Muslim and he changes his religion, he's put to death. Sister, I don't know of any verse in the Quran. You point out in the Quran, there's no such verse in the Quran talking about that a person who is a Muslim and then who changes his faith, he should be put to death. But there are certain rulings. But if you go back to the history, the theory of the Prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know that when the Prophet went to Medina, there was one Sahaba who came and said that when the Prophet said, go and kill these kafirs, they're causing problems, they are the enemies. So one of the Sahaba said that, please forgive my brother. And the Prophet didn't kill him. And later on, that person accepted Islam. So it's not a general rule that any person who's a Muslim who becomes a murtad, he has to be put to death. The ruling is, if a person who is a Muslim, who becomes a murtad, who changes his faith and propagates against the religion of Islam, then the penalty is death. And this is in most of the countries. For example, if in the country of India, there's a citizen of India who shares the secret prince of the Indian army with the enemy. The Indian law will say he should be put to death or life imprisonment. This is the same law in America, same in UK for apostasy. The same law that is there that if you sell your some secret of the country, either death penalty or life imprisonment. So in Islam, it is not a normal ruling that a person who is a Muslim, when he becomes a non-Muslim, he should be put to death. Only if he propagates against Islam and conspires against Islam, then is the ruling of death, sister. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you so much. Yes, you did. The most welcome, Thank sister. Do we have a question from this mic yeah, here? Sure. I just first like to say thank you for coming here. And my name is Puya, so I'm a student drama, and I come from Iran, not Iraq. Iran, the old name Persia. So I come from a religious family. My father, I mean, my family are Muslim, but I born as a Muslim, but. I didn't want it to be born as a Muslim because, you know, so as a family I born, but still I haven't accepted Islam because of some certain points. Uh, my main question was about, I mean, about the time like Asian time, back to the thousand years ago, when the time the Islam come to my country and we became a Muslim. So as I read in the history and those kind of stuff, I found it out that the Arab countries, so they attacked my country and they invade my country and they brought Islam by force. Without my king accepted. So Persia was the old country and it was the most civilized country from the ancient time until now. We believe a real God, we were worshiping a real God, and our religious was Zartosh. So he was a prophet also. So we believe in good things, good thought, good words. So even Cyrus the Great, he was the king of the world and he was doing a lot of good things. Even some people they was confused that they called him Masiha, Masi. He was doing many good things, but he was never said I'm a prophet, I'm a god. But even though that king, when he attacked the other country, he never killed a civilian, he never raped a woman, and he never made them to change the religion. Even somebody was worshiping a cow, he respect for them. Even though he was worshiping a real cow, he can, he can, he could make them to worship also same as what is worshiping. But in the Islam way, if you are, if you're gonna promote your religion, doesn't mean that you have to force it to somebody else, or you have to make them to accept that religion. Because, you know, human being means freedom. So anyone, they should have a right, human rights. So maybe those people, they didn't want it, that religion. So why they have to attack and, you know, to bring it by force? That was the main question that made my heart a bit, you know, <laughs> to make me to, my belief go down. So... Brother, are you Parsi? Pardon? Yeah, I'm from Fars. Fars. Are you a Parsi? You mean Farsi? Are you a Parsi? Are you a Zoroastrian? No, I, I'm not following any religion. You don't I'm belong not, to any religion? I don't, I don't believe... But you said I, the parents were... My parents are Muslim, but because of this confusion and stuff, I never try to follow the religion. I just believe in real God and doing the good things. So you believe so I, in real God and good things. What are the good things? Where do you get the good things from? Good things like I don't harm the others, whatever I'm doing, 
not try to harm the others. That's the first thing. As much as you can do the good things, even helping the others, and believe in the real God, not worshiping a stone or leaf or whatever. And I believe God is single. So, but I didn't. So you have your own philosophy. <laughs> so you want to bring a new religion? <laughs> I'm not gonna make any religion. I'm just following my brain because, as I know, God gave us a brain. So I didn't make my mind busy by following the books. I always, when I was 10 years old, I was just thinking, thinking, thinking until now even. So I tried Another to. Just thinking, my brain. thinking, he saying, God, as long as not a stone. Who told you stone is not a god? Anyway, <laughs> I'll answer your, your basic question. Your basic question is that Muslims came to Persia and they conquered and they forced people to accept Islam. So no one should force at all. I agree with you. Point to be noted is that today the media, the media, media promotes that Islam was spread by the sword. I am aware that there are certain black sheep in the Muslim community and there are certain Muslim rulers who did wrong things. But as a whole, Islam was never spread by the sword. Islam was never spread by the sword. It's spread by sword. Sword, sword. Sword. Sword means force. Force, yeah. Like you said, now Muslims came and conquered yeah, yeah. Persia, etc. You see everywhere it's happening. There are wars taking place. But in Islam, it's clearly mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 256. Like Rafid Deen, there's no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. What we see today, if we analyze that we Muslims, we Muslims, we were the lord of the Arab lands for more than 1400 years. For the past 1400 years, the Muslims were the lord of the Arab lands. For a few years, the Britishers came, for a few years, the French came, but overall, the Muslims were the rulers of the Arab land. Yet today, there are more than 9 million Christians who are Coptic Christians. That means they're Christians in generation. If the Muslims wanted, they could have forced each and every non-Muslim to accept Islam at the point of the sword in the Arab land. These more than 9 million Coptic Christians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was spread by the sword. We Muslims, we ruled India for more than a thousand years. We ruled India for more than a thousand years. If we wanted, we could have forced every non-Muslim Indian to accept Islam at the point of the sword. Today, more than 80% of the Indian and non-Muslims. These more than 80% non-Muslim Indians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was spread by the sword. Which Muslim army has come to Indonesia? Indonesia today has the largest number of Muslims in any country, more than 200 million Muslims. In Malaysia, more than 55% of the citizens of Malaysia are Muslim. I am asking you, which Muslim army came to Malaysia? Your country, which Muslim army came? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? It was the business, it was the traders. When they came here, people accepted this religion. It is the media hype which talks about Islam was spread by the sword. Yes, there were a few people. There were a few black sheep of the Muslim community. Brother, you ask the question, you're listening or you're raising the hand? Okay, sure, sure. You ask sure. the question, you give the background and listen to it and now you want to raise your hand. I have not completed my answer. Okay, sure, continue. If you ask the question, you should think. Because if you're thinking something, I'm a doctor. If you're thinking, that means you won't hear my answer. If I ask you to repeat, you won't be able to repeat 25%. So when you listen, you should give attention. I'm a doctor. I've done psychology also. <laughs> so, this is the media hype. If you read Thomas Carlyle, Thomas Carlyle, historian, he writes in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship. He puts number one hero prophet as Prophet Muhammad He's a Christian. He says, if every new idea originates in one man's head, one man's head it dwells alone in the full world, it will do little good if he takes up a sword and propagates it. You have to first get your sword. He's talking about sword of intellect. There was a survey done in the Plain Suit magazine. A survey in the increase of the major world religions in a span of 50 years. In a span of 50 years, from 1934 to 1984, in a span of 50 years, the increase in the major world religion. It came in Dieter Dijek's Almanic Year book, 1984. Number one maximum increase in religion, it's Islam, 235%. Christianity, only 47%. I am asking you, which war took place between 1934 and 1984, which forced the non-Muslim to accept Islam? Which war? Which war? 
today today leave aside the past today the fastest going religion in america is islam the fastest going religion in europe is islam i am asking you who is forcing the americans to accept islam who is forcing the european to accept islam you were not there born were you present in the past arabs came to my land and forced where were you present this is history many things in history is false so Pro that's what, what okay okay <laughs> A very famous historian, Dilese O'Leary, he writes in the book, Islam at the Crossroad, page number eight. He says, history makes it clear. History makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword, is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians ever repeated. Who says that? Dilese O'Leary. History makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims Forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians ever repeated. This is just in the media today. Muslim terrorist, Muslim terrorist. I am asking you, did any Muslim attack you in this country? No, never. But the media says Muslim the terrorist. Yeah, media is just nonsense. Yes, same way your history is also nonsense. <laughs> When media is nonsense, the history is also nonsense. Some is correct, some is wrong. That's the reason, if you hear the answer, I'd like to end my answer with the quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson says that people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. The bomb of peace, it fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Okay, thank you, doctor, for your answer. But the point is, I didn't get the right answer Brilliant. because that's not media. That's history. And history is not something that can be written the false way. Because if it be written the false way, it can be changed. But that was the true history in all over the world and is written every Brother, places. did you hear my quotation of Delacy O'Leary? Can you repeat it? Repeat what? Repeat Delacy O'Leary's quotation. I said it twice, not once, twice. Most what? of my answer was once. I said twice. Now repeat it. Repeat it to fifty percent. So what's the point of repeating that word? I want to know whether you it went into your head or not. No, because that's what is in my head is that is a history. First thing. I am asking you, can you repeat the statement, the answer which I gave earlier? If you cannot repeat, that means it's useless. Me repeating the answer. You're not listening to me. You're thinking something. No, I'm listening to you. You're can you repeat? That, that is can that is can false. you that's repeat the, the statement of Delacy O'Leary, a very famous historian? No, I can't. I can't. I'm saying it for a third time. Listen. Listen to it and go behind the queue. <laughs> Delacy O'Leary says that history makes it clear. The legend of fanatical Muslims forcing Islam at the point of the sword over what conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. Delacy O'Leary says history has been telling falsehood and you're saying history, I believe in history. Delacy O'Leary is saying that what history says that Muslims are forcing Islam at the point of the sword is the most fantastic myth that historians have repeated. So you have got influenced by the myth. So now think it's a myth and forget it and believe in the fact. The fact is you read the Quran and inshallah I want you to revert to Islam. Revert back to the religion of your parents inshallah. Okay. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. In the unseen, and the unseen we only know through the Quran and the Sunnah. No person can know the unseen in its entirety except through the Quran and Sunnah. And we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has been very merciful to us to tell us what is happening in the unseen. Belief in the unseen is a very fundamental characteristic of a Muslim. And that's why at the very beginning of the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, just after the opening Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the successful people. 